This Town conference will now be recorded. Uh, my name is Marco Devono. I'm the acting president and CEO of uh, Villa Charities. Also joining me on the call this evening are other members of the executive team. Mary Pompili, Vice President of Marketing and Communications, and Giulio Recchioni, Executive Director of Cultural Program, who joined us in January. I'd like to begin by, say, uh, by saying we hope all of you and your families are healthy and staying safe during this difficult time. We know how challenging this past year has been, but it's so important that we all continue to do our part to help fight this current wave of COVID. Uh, in the spirit of openness and transparency with the community, the purpose of this evening's meeting is to share information with you about our facilities, programs, and services, and to answer any questions you may have. We will, we will uh, try to hold these meetings at least twice a year. You can also sign up for the weekly CEO chats uh, for a one-on-one -on -one conversation or call or email me if you'd like to discuss something related to the facilities programs or services as many already have. For tonight, I'd like to note, however, that we will not be discussing our affiliate long-term care homes, Villa Colombo Toronto or Villa Colombo Vaughan. For those who are not aware, you know, the long-term care facilities are managed and operated independently by third-party service care providers and are under the authority of uh, their own boards, their own boards of directors. So Villa Colombo Toronto, Villa Colombo Vaughan, they have their own board of directors as well. Uh, Villa Charities acts as a support and a resource to the long-term care homes, but is not involved in their daily operations. Um, any questions about the long-term care should be directed to the long-term care homes. So first, I'm going to start with uh, our COVID-19 response initiatives. Um, before we begin, I wanted to provide you with an update on our ongoing responses, uh, with specifically in the senior uh, apartments as we fight uh, continue to fight this pandemic. Last month, through our partnership with Villa Colombo Toronto and Humber River Hospital, Villa Charities hosted uh, mobile vaccination clinics to provide the Pfizer vaccine for the residents in Casa del Zotto, Casa Abruzzo, and uh, Caboto Terrace. A total of 532 residents, or, or about 75% of the apartment residents, received their first dose through these mobile vaccination clinics. We've also been able to provide the second dose uh, to the residents of Caboto Terrace. And the second vaccination is planned for Casa Bruzzo and Casa Del Zotto uh, this coming June. Also over the Easter weekend, we delivered uh, a traditional Italian Easter bread to all of our residents in the apartments. That was basically a sweet bread with a, a hard boiled egg nestled into it. And, and, and just as a silly, silly fact, in my family, that bread was called a kutsupa. And my, uh, my grandmother used to say that the more eggs that are in the bread, the more love there is in the family. So just anyway, it, that bread took me back. Uh, we made sure to order dozens of additional breads and we distributed them to, we distributed them to the frontline workers at Villa Colombo Toronto and Villa Colombo Vaughan. We also delivered the traditional Zeppoli pastry to all our residents in honor of St. Joseph's. Villa Charities remains committed to the safety and well being of our seniors, and we thank them for doing their part by staying home and following all the COVID protocols that have been implemented. So I'm going to turn to the status of our programs and facilities. So under the current stay at home order, unfortunately, all of our on site operations for Villa Charities and the Columbus Center remain suspended. The next milestone date that we're all waiting for is May 20th. At that time, we will learn what the status for the Toronto region is. And if we can open, we will. To be able to reopen uh, the gym, Toronto needs to move into the red category. And under the red category, we can have uh, up to 10 people at one time in the gym and we will follow the same registration protocols as we did when we last opened. This will allow us to ensure that we can do prop, uh, proper contact tracing. I know many are wondering if we will reopen the showers and the health clubs right away. Folks, it, it truly boils down to economics. The more facilities we reopen, the more staff we will need to ensure that 
to ensure that we are uh, not exceeding our capacities. And you know, more importantly, cleaning the additional facilities is very, very costly. If we can only have 10 people in the gym, you know, obviously those are not the best financial circumstances to be operating in. So we must manage our costs very closely and operate within these, these parameters until the restrictions are eased. The next category after the red is orange. And under that category, we can have 50 people in the gym. And if we get to the orange, we will open those, those facilities. We are offering fitness, yoga, dance classes, music classes. All of these services are, are presently offered online so that you can continue to participate until we are able to open our doors once again. I'll talk a bit about events. With respect to events, we, we greatly appreciate the support from the community and hope you will continue to register for all of our virtual events and programs this spring, including our annual Italian Heritage Month programs in June. This year, for obvious reasons, our events, uh, our events will be virtual, but we have an exciting lineup planned, uh, so stay tuned for our announcements coming out in May. Food services. In case you didn't see the announcements posted in our social media newsletters, the catering and the event services uh, company, Food Dude, the Food Dudes, is now managing all our event catering operations for Columbus Event Center. We're excited to have them aboard and hope you'll continue to book events at all of our event spaces, included the including the gallery and the Boccaccio space. Just last week, we also announced that through this partnership with the Food Dudes, their newest pantry location opened in the Columbus Center. Pantry Lawrence West is now open for pickup and delivery and offers a great selection of convenient, healthy and customizable meals plus Italian food offerings. As a member of the Villa Charities family, the pantry is offering you 10% off any food purchases when you order online. Just use the promo code MEMBER10. Villa Charities 50th anniversary. As you may know, uh, we proudly celebrated the 50th anniversary of Villa Charities on April 15th. And while we were unable to organize any large celebrations due to the current COVID restrictions, we were still able to recognize this milestone with a number of really cool initiatives. On April 15th, the CN Tower and the Toronto sign in Nathan Phillips Square were lit up in the, in the colors of the Italian flag, signifying the importance of Villa Charities to the Italian community in Toronto. TLN Media Group produced a series of commemorative videos to highlight the past 50 years of Villa Charities and is running them on their channel. Villa Charities was also on the cover of Panorama Magazine and was the feature story. And we received many congratulatory messages from dignitaries, leaders in the Italian cultural community and other Italian personalities, which are available to view, to view in a compilation video. We even received uh, letters from Prime Minister Trudeau and Immigration Minister Mendicino recognizing the anniversary. I'd like to thank everyone who expressed their support and mark this occasion with, with us. We will continue to celebrate our anniversary throughout the year, so watch for updates. You can find everything on our website at villacharities.com or on our social media outlets. So upcoming events. We are also planning for the return of our fundraising events with the inaugural Ital Canadian Golf Open on August 30th at Eagles Nest Golf Club. In partnership with the Canadian Italian Business and Professional Association of Toronto, CHIBA, and also the Italian Chamber of Commerce, we are partnering with them to host this event. Mark your calendars now and check our website for more information as you register. As always, I encourage everyone to sign up to receive the Village Charities newsletter so you'll receive the latest updates and any changes to our programs and services. So th those are just my, my sort of opening remarks at this time. Be happy to turn this over to to any questions that you may have. I do have a few questions that were already sent to me, and I'll start with those, and then I'll just turn it over to to anybody who has a question. Uh, the first question came uh, from an anonymous person who I'm going to basically parap paraphrase what what they said. Um, 
basically looking back at Village Charities taken the path, uh, what would the status of Village Charities be had they basically done the original Columbus Center uh, redevelopment project? So, you know, hindsight is 2020, of course, but that, and that is certainly a, a hot potato item. Uh, that program had its pros, it had its cons, but I'm not going to go there. Pro the, the project didn't happen. It's no point in, in a rehashing, you know, old, old stories. Second, uh, the second question from the same person is related to the tennis courts. Have you considered expanding the tennis courts uh, since the parking lot is, is not used that much? Um, you know, I, I, I'm hard pressed to find a business case to build a couple more tennis courts, to be honest with you. We had two more tennis courts uh, back in the day. Those tennis courts were underutilized. Uh, they were then turned into a beach volleyball court, which was also not very utilized. And then they became a, a, an additional parking space. So uh, like to, to build a couple of more tennis courts at this point, I'd be hard pressed to come up with a business case to support that at this time. Uh, the next question, I think it's also anonymous. I was wondering if any improvements have been done to the women's health club since the club was closed and if in fact it will be reopening when things improve we we have not done any improvements to the club it will reopen once you know the capacities are such that it makes sense to open you know at the end of the day we're, we're trying to run a business with you know limited capacities now and we need to manage them as, as smartly as possible and you know we cannot open the health clubs at this point um those are the only questions that I received. Siobhan, have you received any more since? No, no further questions were received. No. Anybody else on? Uh, Susan, it's great to see you, by the way. So I see you have your hand up. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, at what point would the pool be open? Or the will pool? it be opened? Yeah, the, the pool, the, the plan for the pool is to open it uh, immediately, but at a reduced uh, capacity. The hours, so as, as you can appreciate, Susan, it's an old, old pool, inefficient. Yeah. You know, to keep it open from 6 to 10 every day, it, it truly, it doesn't make sense, but it will open at uh, with uh, reduced hours. So those, it'll still be open. Uh, Gabriella, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we were still planning to open it six days a week to the members, but but at reduced hours. Certainly, we would take advantage of the fact that uh, during the mornings there were a lot of aquafit classes. Uh, it was certainly busy at, in the beginning of the day, and we will certainly make sure that that happens. But it will not be open as it was before, seven mm -hmm. days a week, six to ten. It it just doesn't make sense to staff it. To, to, it just doesn't make sense. Um and. And um, would it open um, when Toronto, whenever Toronto goes into the red? Is that when it would open? Yeah, that, that's what okay. we're planning. That's what we're planning. So the capacities are 10 per room. So the pool, we're calling that another room. So we will have 10 in the pool area at, at any given time for one hour or actually 55 minutes at a time. And then you know, we'll take the last five minutes to have everybody, uh, you know, dry up and, and leave, and then the next session could start. So, when we are allowed to open, Susan, we will. But just appreciate that it won't be for the same amount of hours that it was before. Yeah, I completely understand that. Thank you. So, thank you. Anybody else? Um, can I ask you, like, will you be? when whenever the gym opens will you be um i know you've got online classes but will you be doing uh maybe it's to gabriella doing classes again um in the room downstairs yes yeah, so or some we, of the other rooms we, we did talk about this uh before the government went into the latest you know lockdown scenario we were moving things outside so we were going to move the spinning bikes outside, separate them, like, you know, large separation of space. The, uh, the class of the fitness classes outside, we're going to start as well. Right now, you know, 
I, I, I'm not totally clear that I'm sure that I want to have people in a confined, you know, small room exercising, breathing heavily. Uh, you know, I want to keep everybody safe. If we could move those classes outside, though, that would make a lot more sense. Anybody else have a question that isn't uh, that we can't see them right now? I'm happy to take any question you want. Awkward moments. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we scheduled an hour. Um, not sure if, if there's no no other questions. Um, I, I can Mark. tell you some jokes, but they're not that funny. I think Arvin, you have yeah. a question. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, quick question, I guess. Then, when if um, the gym does open back up with the limited capacity and is uh, as a health club member, would would the how would the sort of fees kick in at that point again? Is it a regular fee what we're paying before? Is it a uh, lower fee? And then what? What about those health club members that had those credits from before? Is that still being applied? Just just wondering about that. Absolutely, Arvin. All the credits will be honored, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, we won't be opening the health club at the beginning, as I, as I noted. Right. But once we are able to, um, I, I'm leaning towards a small discount because the hours are not what they were before, but you know, it's still to be determined. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> not sure what else I could say for you guys right now, but if there's no other. Oh, I see Rayanne. Will fitness classes? Uh, I lost the question. What, did, did you see it, uh, Shivet? Uh, Ryan, do you mind? I'm not able to. I'm not seeing her. Yeah, a question. I think she's asking: Will fitness classes be on a sign-up basis? Absolutely, Ryan. All of our classes need to have some sort of registration process. You will be registering to come into the gym. That is a must for contact tracing. Uh, but you know, Gabrielle will have uh, sign-up classes for all of her all of her fitness classes. Yes. And Rayanne, I hope to see you again in the in the spinning classes. Anybody else? I have I have one question coming in by email. Hold on. Oh, okay. it's Maria who is on the phone. I see Vivian. Um, Vivian Riva had a question. Will we be having spinning outdoors possibly? Vivian, we, we did try to do that uh, before the latest lockdown announcement. I, I don't want to do the spinning classes downstairs, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, as you know, I was an avid participant in those classes. I definitely, I need them right now. Uh, but yes, we will be doing them again, but outside. Shivan, did you have another question? Maria, she's on the phone. She can go. She can go ahead now. Okay. Yes, can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Yeah, I, I just have a, a question. Uh, being a, an Italian cultural center, is there a reason why we went with the food dudes? I mean, I've just looked at their menu online, and it's predominantly not not Italian, whereas at least with Cafe Cinquecente, you, you know, it, it offered primarily Italian food. So uh, is that, will we have input on changing their menu so it offers more Italian food? So uh, like chicken shawarma is not Italian. Tandoori, tandoori chicken. Is it Mary or Maria? I'm sorry. Maria. Uh, Maria. So there are Italian menu options on their uh, uh, their list as well. If you, if you check online, there yeah, are I did. But I would say sixty percent of it, or 
or, or even 65 is predominantly non-Italian. And I just find as you rebranded as being an Italian center of uh, cultural excellence, why would we go with with someone to run the restaurant that isn't maintaining it? Like, like I thought would have been a good idea is if we could have partnered with Italy, Italy and made it like an Italy outpost north. Mm -hmm. if, if they would have been interested, we certainly would have looked at that. But unfortunately, uh, there weren't any other organizations that were. Food dudes, I mean, we're not going to discriminate about, you know, what nationalities there are, but th there are Italian menu options. There's a lot of healthy options on that menu as well. They've got a, a <laughs> they've got a beautiful espresso machine that you, you, you've got to see it to believe it. Um, and like I said, we're, we're, I think they're doing a great job and they will do a great job for us, the community and uh, all the patrons that come through the facility. All right, man. My second question is: uh, Once you open, will will the ventilation be increased? Because the when you increase the number of air changes per hour in the room, you would reduce the the probability of having viruses built up in in the area. So, has ventilation been increased? So, in the last two years, millions of dollars were spent on HVAC improvements to the building. Uh, can I speak specifically to, you know, the individual units in the gym? No, uh, but, you know, there's a reason for having these reduced capacities. And at, at 10, that's what we're going to go with. But as I said, we've spent millions of dollars over the last couple of years to make HVAC improvements throughout the entire Columbus Center facility. No, that, that's great. And, you know, being a, a, a safety specialist, ventilation is important and to turn over the the air in the room so if we've improved the ventilation that's great thank you that's it for me okay thanks for your question okay so if there are uh, no more questions, I'm going to bid you all a good night. Stay safe. And, you know, I look forward to seeing you all back in the facilities. And when I see you or if you see me, I'm going to buy you a coffee on that new espresso machine. Okay. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you.